Welcome back to the channel guys, I'm Gary Martin and in this series we're sharing the world of golf in Pakistan and a few other pieces. But in today's journey, I think we've finally arrived in Pakistan. <laughs> you saw that just now, didn't you? I'll put some coverage on the screen guys. When I arrived in Islamabad, what were probably like eight days ago, I thought I'd arrived in Pakistan. No, you arrived in capital city now in Pakistan. I arrived in the capital city where, you know, after two or three days I felt pretty comfortable. You know, it yes. felt a bit like home. I got all my home comforts. Yeah. I felt, you know, dead settled down. Yeah. Um, because everyone told me about how populated Pakistan were and it were going to make me feel uncomfortable. You know, just so many people. Yeah. But I've got to admit, it was busy, but it didn't unsettle me so much. No. Uh, it was quite comfortable in Islamabad. Yeah. But, um, I mean, I'm just going to put a bit of footage in now of this journey we started probably a couple of hours ago now, or maybe not quite that long ago. Yeah. And it was insane. It was a small town we were going through, weren't it? I yes. Can pick, what was the town called? Kamalia. Kamalia. Um, it was a town, and honestly, my blood pressure is through the roof. What do you think about my blood pressure? I was driving. I know. I, I honestly, this, it was like insane. Let's have a look at this. I think one of the things we discovered or we got talking about were is, and I said like, I appreciate like. It, it may look a little bit like poverty in these areas, hmm. but what I was saying were is I think that the dream of probably moving to England for some people, they wouldn't like it when they actually got there because it looks like they're so chilled out, all these shopkeepers. Yeah. They're kind of like sat outside in the deck chairs. Yeah. They don't need to make loads of sales to have a reasonable standard of living, do they? Well, to get by. To get by. Whereas, because because there's no, you know, you don't have to have car insurance, you don't have to have house insurance, there's not as many expenses. So I was thinking like, the kind of work that they're used to and, you know, taking it easy, talking to customers, chilling outside, maybe having a couple of hours off when they want to, it's, yeah. there's no, it's flexible. Yeah, it is. I think if they were to sort of come to uh, UK, they would realize that life's pretty hard when it comes to working. Yes, uh, many ways. Uh, quite a very, very regulated life, for example, uh, long working hours, and yeah. when you're working, you're working, you're not sitting on the chair. No. And uh, here, obviously, the people even who are working, I think they only do probably, you know, uh, three, four hours of effective work. Yeah. The rest is just kind of, you know, sitting around and walking around and things like that. We, we talk about make, making hens meat in UK to live. Yeah. And, you know, if they knew how much hens meat or our minimum wage were, they'd be yeah. like, whoa, that's unbelievable. But what they probably don't realise is all the costs of living in the UK. Absolutely. Um, which, you know, take any any of that income away and yeah. you end up pretty much living. I'd, I'd imagine somebody who's earning hens meat in the UK yeah. is, is probably got somewhere around the same sort of living in terms of just being able to get by. Yes. The so, other side of the coin is the people who are reasonably well off or reasonably rich. Yeah. They don't work at all, to in, be honest. In Not in Pakistan. They don't work at all. That's, they just uh, live uh, on the means they already possess and uh, it's perfectly fine. Because in Pakistan, once you reached a certain stage financially yeah. and uh, and otherwise, then uh, life becomes quite a luxury. That's what I observed, and we were talking about you know a few different costs of things. And one of them were what I was so uh, astonished by were is a brand new Honda motorbike <laughs> in Pakistan. Seriously, guys, I'm going to put a picture up on screen. <laughs> would cost you less than 500 pounds. It's less than even uh, 450. Two years ago, it was 200 pounds. Yeah, the locals here think that, you know, motorbikes so expensive at 400 pounds, but honestly, you know, they cost over 6,000 pounds in UK for the same motorbike. Right, I'm not into motorbikes. I have no idea of the cost of motorbikes in so the UK. So that's how much we get, you know, tax added onto things and, and, and overcharge for things. Uh, but just a simple cost of food and, and living is so much cheaper, isn't it? Yeah, the local produce is very cheap. 
for yeah. example, local fruit and veggies, they go reasonably cheap. But if you try to live a luxurious life and a bit of uh, chocolate and burger culture, the life is as expensive as in the UK. Yeah. What could we say about the... Um, we've had to sort of dodge quite a bit of traffic with the sugar cane. Is it, is it time for... Yeah, it's the time for the sugar cane. You saw a lot of them because this is a, this is peak time for the sugar yeah. cane to be cultivated from the fields and take it to the sugar mills. So we, you can mention that. We were warned, you know, about this journey that the route we decided to take. Yes. We encounter a bit of trouble with kind of like sugar cane uh, trucks and tractors. Yes. Um, and it, it, it was quite right, weren't it, actually? Yeah. It, it, it's a season. It's a peak season for the sugar cane from cultivated from the fields uh, and transported to the sugar mills. At, at one point, um, we had to sort of drive on the wrong side of the road. <laughs> <laughs> Don't use that. To avoid... Well, there's no penalty points here, no so it's all right. penalty points. To avoid getting stuck, because um, we, were, we were joking, but, you know, if you stop your vehicle in Pakistan, yeah. you potentially could be stood for five minutes. You've got to keep moving, haven't you? Yeah. That's just the nature of the beast. And everybody does the same. And everybody does it. You can't afford to just be a pushover, can you? And then you will stay on give way whole of your, you know, <laughs> journey period. So we're thankfully we're on the motorway. Blood pressure levels are lowering. Yes, it's relaxed now. Eh? I'm feeling a bit more relaxed, and I think we might be having a bit of a KFC later. I think it's about the time you're getting fed up <laughs> off of curries, aren't you? We were joking. I was saying like, if any of my friends ask me out for a curry when I get back. <laughs> I just don't want one like I yeah. love I you know I love a curry donut. You do. But even I'm now getting to the point where I'm looking forward to a bit of bland food. So it's a KFC day today. Without yeah. flavour. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> Give me beans on toast. <laughs> cheese on. <laughs> that's the, that'll that'll be a good one. Brilliant. So T, what what should I expect in Lahore then? Because I've visited Islamabad, you know, I visit Multan. What next? As you can appreciate, uh, Islamabad is a capital city with all the embassies and ambassadors and their families and a lot of foreign foreigners around. Yeah. And it says, uh, uh, obviously, cap- being the capital city, all the uh, elite is living in, in Islamabad. Uh, Multan is is a big city, but it's uh, in the it's situated in the quite backward area, and that reflects in the city as well. Uh, now we're heading to Lahore, on the way we stopped over again, uh, and now we're heading to Lahore, and Lahore is very multicultural, metropolitan city, half of the city would be very modern, yeah. uh, very affluent, and half of the city is, uh, is, is, the, is the old city, yeah. and it has the old building, old features, overpopulated, oversaturated, and all that. Will I feel as comfortable as I did uh, The area we're going to live in is very close to Raya Golf Course, which is, uh, I don't know, uh, seeing is believing. When you get there, you might decide to say, no, Ramanza has its own feature, yeah. but Raya has its own beauty. I'm not sure, but let's say uh, it's remain to be seen. What, what you won't be aware of, guys, is after playing Ramanza and doing the, we had a filming day, we actually went the next morning to play casually off yeah. camera. Yes. And I swear down to heat shot one over gross for nine holes. <laughs> it was all flukes. Seriously, I might have a few little video clips. We did some videos for social media. Was it one over or two over? No, it was one over. You that is the best you've ever played. One I think so. over par yeah. for well, nine holes. I've never played this good. To be honest, the max, my best score is 42 on nine hole. At yeah. once maybe 41 with a bit of luck. Uh, but solid uh, one over, never played. It just, never imagined. It just shows you, obviously we haven't recorded today, so we had a bit less pressure. It just shows you how you can still play good golf without bashing the ball, because you take it a lot easier now, don't you? You don't hit yeah. the balls hard. But to be honest, uh, I must admit, this is not my game. It's this. This is just one of those days. Yeah. Just, just one of those days when you play better. And on top of that, in your presence, I always play better anyway. Well played. Thank you. You miscounted. Candy was saying one over, and I was thinking over. two over. And I was two under. We played off of the senior tees, though, because for filming yeah. we played off the pro tees, didn't yeah. we? Yeah. Which you felt were a little bit, it were a little bit of a challenge, too yeah. much of a challenge. It wasn't yeah. too long for tea. Um, so we played off his tees on, on that morning, 
and I had three birdies and a bogey. Yeah. Um, and it, your drive was stunning, didn't I? It, it, I don't know. Obviously, it's one of those days when you play better. But this yeah. is my record score, as I said before. I never broke 40 in nine holes, but yesterday it was 36, 37. Right. I think we'll um, we'll put camera off and we'll chill out. Yeah. We'll have this little bit of a less than an hour left to Lahore. Yeah. Just to chill. Yeah. Um, and then the fun begins again. Yeah, and uh, we can have a bit of view of the motorway and then chill. 